فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We previously spoke about in the explanation of the kitab al-waraqat للإمام أبي معالي الجويني رحمه الله We spoke about النهي uh, prohibition And so inshallah ta'ala Today we're going to be starting Faslan min usuli al-fiqh A unit from the units in Usul al-Fiqh, which is Al-Ammu when, when a textual evidence comes and it's generic And the Am is connected to Yata'allaqu bi dalalat al-Alfaad Am is connected to the dalalat al-Alfaad Meaning it's connected to the wordings of the Qur'an and the Sunnah and So inshallah ta'ala, that's what we're going to be doing today uh, Bi-idhnillahi al-Kareem And if time allows us, we'll also be finishing off the Khas and do both of them. If not, we will do as much as we are able to do. Bi'idhnillah al-kareem. Sam. General and specific. Am wa qas. Am, general, encompasses two or more things without restriction. It can be expressed in four forms. A single noun, a singular noun made definite by an alif and a lam, the definite article. A plural noun made definite by lam, Nouns of indeterminis- indeterminacy, such as who for rational beings, what for non-rational being, non-rational things, any for both of these, where for place, when for time, what for inquiry and reward and other. Other specific are those that are not general. To make something specific is to distinguish part of a whole. It is either attached and separated. Attached comprises exception, condition, and qualification by an attribute. Faslun. Wa amma al-aam, fa huwa ma amma shay'ayni fa sa'ida. Min qawlika, amamtu zaydan wa amran bil-ata. Wa amamtu jami'an nasi bil-ata. Wa l-alfaaduhu arba'ah. Al-ismu al-wahidu al-mu'arraf bil-alif wal-laam. واسم الجمع المعرف بالألف واللام والأسماء المبهمة كمن في من يعقل وما في ما لا يعقل وأي في الجميع كمن في من يعقل وما وما في ما لا يعقل وأي في الجميع وأين في المكان ومتى في الزمان وما في الاستفهام والجزاء وغيره ولا في النكرات ككولك لا رجل في الدار والعموم من صفات النطق فلا تجوز دعوى العموم في غيره من الفعل وما يجري مجراه The author رحمه الله أبي معالي الجويني رحمه الله رحمة واسعة This unit He's talking about is known as Al-Am, general, the general evidences. And as I said before, <coughs> it connects to Dalalat al And the author's definition of Am in saying that Am is What we can say is Ashbahu bil It's as though we can say he is more inclined to the lexical definition than the definition according to the Usuriyin, the scholars who deal with Usul al-Fiqh. It's as though his definition is more closer in terms of definition to the lexical, lexical linguistic definition than it is to the, um, ling- uh, the uh, definition of the Usuliyin. So the definition that we think should be chosen and should be said is that Am is istilahan technically هو اللفظ الموضوع لاستغراق جميع أفراده بلا حصر It is anything that is placed, any word that is placed 
to really encompass all of its types without any without any uh, exclusion it's all included then the author rahimahullah after defining it what he did was um he categorized it into four he says its wordings are four the wordings of what he means here the wordings as forms when he says to you the wordings are four he means it's forms so the siyag of umum the forms of generalization are these four that which he mentioned the first one is al ismul wahidul mu'arrafu billami my copy says billami so you, 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 you as you read it you said bil alif wal lam and it's stronger to say that the correct definition is al mu'arrafi bil lam because this is the madhhab and the view that the author takes which is that man yara anna adat al ta'rif hi al lam some of the grammarians and some of the ulama actually believe that the definite of the word the word being definite is not the alif and the lam it's only the lam and that the alif is alif al wasli and that the lam is what makes the word definite and this is the madhhab alladhi yamilu ilayhi it's the opinion that the author leans towards and the author rahimahullah he um, he says al ism al wahid al ism al wahid al mu'arraf bil lam and as I said that this is the madhab in which the author sees that what makes the word definite is the lam, not the alif and the lam. Because some of the scholars, they see that the alif and lam is what makes the word definite and others see it as, it's as though it's a lam. And inshallah ta'ala, in our explanation of qatr nada wa ballu sada, there would be there, in there, there should be a enough explanation there inshallah ta'ala. The alif al lam that shows generalization, my beloved brothers and sisters, is the alif al lam that is not lil ahdiyah. Because some of the times the alif al lam is used as lil ahd. Like, for example, me and you meet each other and I say to you, al waladu, the kid. Now, this al ahdiyah means that the kid that you and I yesterday met when we were going to, for example, Brixton, the, uh, the kid that we met or the boy, the, the boy that we met. So when I say al-waladu, this alif al-lam is ahdiya, it's not istighraq. It's actually something that brings the memory, it's, 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 it's the boy that comes to your mind first. That's ahdiya. That's not here, that's not here in this particular place, the alif al-lam that the author, I mean the lam that the author is talking about here. He's talking about the alif al-lam, according to those who say it's alif al-lam, and according to him, the lamb that he's referring to is the lamb al-istighraqiyah. Lamb al-istighraqiyah. Um, lamb al-istighraqiyah actually means that the lamb that encompasses, the, it's, it's the lamb of general, general, generalization. It's the lamb of generalization. So, for example, when we say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, that lamb in Alhamdu is istighraqiyya. It means all of hamd is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, those are the two forms that the author mentions from the forms of umum. The third one, which is Al Asma Al Mubhama. He says, Kaman, like the word man, fima yaqilu, for the one who has what? Aqal. In the Arabic language, the word man is used lil aqil. And the ma is used for what? Ghayru <coughs> aqil. So man is used for humans. And the ma is used for things, objects and things. That's the difference between the two. And wa a and the word a, all three of them are mubhama. They are all what? They're all mubhama. And the uh, is a smart which are mubhama, my beloved brothers and sisters in the Arabic language, is ismul ishara and 
الاسم الموصول ذي اسم إشارة which is هذا أن هذه أن هذاني أن هؤلاء أن ها all of those are أسماء which are اسم أسماء which are إشارة and the second one is أسماء which are موصول الذي التي اللذاني اللاتي الذين all of those are أسماء which are موصولة connectives they are all أسماء مبهمة and what does the word مبهمة means التي لا تدل على معين it is that which does not show a specific thing when I say هذا this I'm a that it could be anything in front of me that I'm pointing at so you say which one this one or this one no one specifically owns هذا for you to for us to know what you mean by the هذا فتفتقر إلى غيرها في تعيين مرادها it's meaning you need to say something else to prove its meaning so for example when you say to me that boy and there are four or five boys in front of me I'm going to say which one and so you're going to say no it's the chubby one so you have to bring something else in order to anything that's like that it's ambiguous it's unclear it's called asma' uh, mubhama that's the second sec- third type and asma' mubhama as you can see because no one specifically owns it it shows generalization no one owns it and the fourth which the author mentioned is wala fi nakirat and la as-sabiqatu lil nakirat it is the la that goes before what goes before the nakirat so there's an indefinite before the indefinite there is a la he said that's the fourth one then the author rahimahullah he mentions something which is he says he says والعموم من صفات النطق then the author mentions مسألة which is أن العموم من صفات النطق that generalization comes by utterance and not by actions because there's going to be a point that's going to come to later inshallah ta'ala where he's going to say ونعني من نطق what we mean by the نطق is قول, قول الله the statement of Allah وَقَوْلَ الرَّسُولِ And the statement of the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم The author doesn't allow that idea and that belief and that concept which says that generalization can occur from actions. And he says وَلَا يَجُوزُ دَعْوَ الْعُبُومِ فِي غَيْرِهِ And it is not correct to claim generalization in other than utterance. من الفعل such as actions you can't use actions as generalization <coughs> وما يجري مجراه and anything that takes its place anything that takes the place of action none of them can be considered general the only thing that can be considered general according to Abi Ma'ali al-Juaini is what? القول it has to be a speech it has to be a speech and this belief of his which is بأن القول that the قول um, لا يجري في الأفعال ب, uh, ب, the قول which is بأن العموم لا يجري في الأفعال that the generalization cannot occur in an action something can't be general because of the Prophet's mere action this is some, it's a very famous speech it's not something he's unique in or he's alone in it's a قول which is مشهور عند الأصوليين it's an opinion held by the scholars of usul al-fiqh but the scholars of and i always say this the muhaqqiqina the scholars of tahqiq in this particular field who look at the views and prove which of the views are the strongest they distinguish between the actions of the messenger they don't just leave it the way abi ma'ali al-juwaini did because abi ma'ali al-juwaini rahimahullah what did he say wala tajuzu da'wa al-umum fi ghayrihi min al-fi'l and his alif al-lam in al-fi'liya is istighraqiya. He means all actions. You, none of them are generalization, right? And that is not what the scholars of tahqiq have taken. The scholars of muhaqqiqin of this particular field, they said that the actions is not all of it. So what did they do? At-tafriqu bayna al-fi'li. They divide between the actions. So the first one they said is called al-fi'lu al-buthbat. Al-fi'lu. المثبت 
which is called the affirm, affirmative action. The affirmative action. The affirmative action is that which has been found in Sahihain, Bukhari and Muslim. And then Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the Prophet sallallahu when he ent- came to Mecca, when the Prophet sallallahu entered Mecca after the conquest, and the Prophet entered it, Salla fiha rak'ataini, he prayed two rak'ah, two units of prayer in the Kaaba. Now, when we say that the Prophet prayed two rak'ah, what are we affirming? We're affirming an action for the Prophet. This is called an affirmative action. Salla fiha rak'ataini, the Prophet prayed two rak'ah there. Are you with me, brothers? Now that we said that the Prophet ﷺ prayed two rak'ah in it, are you there, brothers? This one doesn't show generalization, which is the muthbat. Because if we say that the muthbat shows generalization, here what we would have to say is that, that the Prophet ﷺ, he prayed fard and he prayed nafl. He prayed an obligatory prayer or he play, prayed a voluntary prayer. And that's impossible because all we mention is that the Prophet prayed two rak'ah. It's either wajib or it's sunnah that he prayed. Are you with me? So generalization here doesn't seem to be able to enter into it. Are you with me, brothers? So when he went there, he prayed two rak'ah. Either whether, whether you take the opinion that it was too obligatory that he prayed or he prayed two sunnah that he prayed, the point is that he, you have to choose one. And if you do choose one, you leave the realm of it being general. The second one, on the other hand, it becomes Al-Fi'lul Manfiyu. Al-Fi'lul Manfiyu means that the action is the opposite, is the negative action. It's the negative action, which is that you don't affirm something for him, but rather you negate something from him. For example, you say, and then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the famous hadith, لم يؤذن للعيدين the hadith of uh, Jabir ibn Samurah where he said I pray with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم صلاة العيد and he never صلى الله عليه وسلم ever done adhan what did he negate from the Prophet? he negated an action from the Prophet what did he negate from the Prophet? he negated an action from the Messenger عليه الصلاة والسلام and he mentions that he did not do adhan, nor did he do iqamah. So my question is that, is that negation? Is it a negative act? Is it negating an action from him? Or is it affirming an action for him? It's negating something from him. So here is, is that when the Prophet والسلام, did not do adhan or iqamah, are you there brothers? Then the person is allowed to say to the people, as jami'ah He's allowed to say that. He's also allowed to say, as salatu ibadallah, prayer of slaves of Allah. You're allowed to do anything that's not a adhan. Because the negation here allows generalization of the opposite of what's negated. Because the argument here is that the negative action shows generalization. Whereas the affirmative action does not show generalization. And that's the strongest what? That is the strongest view that stands out there. And this is the view that was strengthened and pushed by Muhammad Amin al-Shanqiti rahimahullahu ta'ala. Which is, this qa'ida is what you use to nullify, is to destroy the innovation that people newly introduce. Because if you say that the, the action that's negated doesn't show generalization, then it opens the door of innovation. It opens the doors of innovation. Here then brings, back, bring us, brings us back to an issue which is, if that's the case then, the first one which is that the Prophet ﷺ dakhala al-Ka'bata 
Fasalla, he prayed fi harakatin. He prayed two prayer. So are you saying, because this whole discussion goes back to, if the nakirat is in the siyak of ithbat, and the nakirat if it's in the siyak of what? An nafi. Because what we just said now is what? Al fi'lu al muthbat and the fi'lu al manfiyu. It goes back to the discussion and the argument of the Usuliyin, which is an to fi siyak al ithbati la ta'umu. It doesn't show generalization if it's affirmative. Just like the action of the Prophet that's merely affirmed for him doesn't show generalization. عليه الصلاة والسلام وأن النكرة في سياق النفي and as for the the indefinite in the context of negation shows generalization this is what roots from your discussion then and this is the view that was taken by the محققين of the أصوليين كابن القيم رحمه الله محمد الأمين الشنقيطي رحمه الله محمد محمد بن إسماعيل الصنعاني رحمه الله and others that if the nakira, the indefinite, is in the context of affirmation, it doesn't show generalization. But if it's in the context, the indefinite is in the context of a negation, it shows generalization. This is where the discussion lies back to. And my beloved brothers and sisters, usul al-fiqh, as you can see right now, is a matter when you're looking at it and you're strengthening an opinion, it's important that you understand where this discussion roots from. Or else, the person will never be able to really see and enjoy the secrets of Usul al-Fiqh. The secrets of Usul al-Fiqh. And he will never be able to what? Comprehend the ahkam al-Shari'ah, the jurisprudent rulings, in its correct manner. Naam. Exception is the exclusion of what of that which an expression would otherwise include. It is only valid on condition that there remains something on that from which the exception was made. Another condition is that the exception be connected to the speech from which exception is being made. That which is ex accepted can that sh that which is ex accepted can be mentioned before that from which it is accepted. Exception. Exception can be from the same class and from other things. A condition can precede that which is made conditional upon it. The unqualified is interpreted in accordance to with, in in accordance with that with with what is qualified by an attribute. For example, slave is qualified by iman in some passages. So unqualified references to slaves are interpreted in accordance with the qualified ones. The Quran, the Quran can be made specific by the Quran, the Quran by the Sunnah, the Sunnah by the Quran, the Sunnah by the Sunnah, and utterance by analogy, whereby at utterance we mean the speech of Allah and the speech of the Prophet, peace, be, peace and blessings be upon him. Faslun, wal khasu yuqabilu al-aam, wa takhsisu tamyizu ba'd al-jumlati bil-thikr, وهو ينقسم إلى متصل ومنفصل فالمتصل الاستثناء والشرط والتقييد بالصفة والاستثناء إخراج ما لولاه لدخل في الكلام وإنما يصح بشرط أن يبقى من المستثنى منه شيء ومن شرطه أن يكون متصلا بالكلام ويجوز تقديم المستثنى على المستثنى تثنى منه ويجوز الاستثناء من الجنس ومن غيره والشرط يجوز أن يتقدم على المشروط والمقيد بالصفة يحمل عليه المطلق كالرق كالرقبة قيدت بالإيمان في بعض المواضع وأطلقت في بعض المواضع فيحمل المطلق على المقيد والمنفصل وهو تخصيص أحد الدليلين بالآخر ويجوز تخصيص الكتاب بالكتاب والكتاب بالسنة والسنة بالكتاب والسنة بالسنة ونطق بالقياس ونعني, ونعني بالنطق 
قول الله تعالى وقول وقول الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم ذي اوث رحمه الله الامام ابي معالي الجويني رحمه الله هي هي بليسز ا يونت فروم ذا يونت اوف اصول الفقه اند ذات از الخاص ويتش از سبيسيفيك and he followed it up with after speaking about generalization he speaks about specification and generalization it is as we said from the dalalatul alfaz and the specification is also from the dalalatul alfaz the author says rahimahullah wal khass yuqabil al am the khass which is the specific is the opposite of general So after you've come to know what generalization means, the opposite of it is what specification is. And what he means by it is the opposite of it, he means isharatan ila ta'alluqihi bihi ala wajhi al-muqabalati fi dalalati wal-ahkam. It's opposite in it in terms of what it shows and also in terms of its rulings. But since we said that the definition he gave in Am was deficient, so we wouldn't find this definition of Al Khas that the author is saying to be correct is said to be said that it's the opposite of Al Am, right? So we'd have to define what Khas means, and our definition of Al Khas would actually be the opposite of the definition we gave regarding what the Am. For in the khas istilahan huwa al-lafz al-mawdu' li dalalati ala fard aw akthar ma hasr. The khas is tech, in its technical definition it is the wording that which, which is placed is the wording that is placed li dalalati ala fard aw akthar ma hasr. It shows a specific or it shows a particular thing or even more but it has a restriction on it it's restricted it's it's not unrestricted but the general generalization is unrestricted it's too is general then the author tells us the ruling that is connected to takhsis he says tamizu he says tamizu ba'd al-jumlati this is the ruling of it الحكم المترتب the ruling that comes out of تخصيص is that it distinguishes some of the things that are in it. It means إخراج بعض الفاظ العامي. Some of the wordings of generalization is taken out because as we said the خاص is لفظ دال على مقصود معين right that the خاص indicates and it shows some a particular thing that we have in front of us. Then the author رحمه الله he divided the takhsisat and the mukhassisat ila qismayn ithnayn he divided them into two he says wa huwa yanqasim ila muttasil wa munfasil he said it divides into two and the first one is al mukhassisat al muttasila which is the connective specification and the third, second one is al mukhassisat al munfasila the detached connectives sorry the, the the detached specification what does he mean by the first one which is al-mukhassisat al-muttasila the mukhassisat al-muttasila is allati tastaqil bi nafsiha it's the one that can stand independently as for the mukhassisat which is munfasila is التي تستقل بنفسها التي تستقل بنفسها it is the one that is independent so the muttasila is لا تستقل بنفسها it can't stand independently the second one is that it can stand independently then the author رحمه الله he mentioned three from the مخصصات المتصلة he mentioned <coughs> he mentioned <coughs> the author mentioned three from the al mukhassisat al muttasila which is what the connective specification he mentioned three of them the first one is al istithna exception the second one is al sharth which is condition 
and the third one which is as-sifa which is characteristics the author only defined istithna in this book and he did not define a shart was sifa he did not define shart nor did he define as sifa so when he defined al istithna he said fal istithna istithna is ikhraj ma lawlahu la dakhala fi al kalam istithna he said it means it is to exclude something that if you were not to exclude it it would have been part of the speech now if you weren't to use the exception automatically people would have added it into it meaning there was a need for you to accept, give place an exception on it the scholars mentioned that the adat the tool to use istithna is illa wa ihda akhawatiha it is illa and its sisters whereas in is in the sharia illa wa akhawatiha is not only in the sharia the istithnaat what can be used is more than those tools that they the the aimatu al-lugha and the usuliyin mention the author mentioned two conditions after that for the istithna he mentions he mentioned two conditions for the istithna to be correct and that is the first one is wa inna ma yasihu bi shartin wa inna ma yasihu it is correct bi shart he said ay yabqa min al mustathna minhu shay'un that whatever you're excluding from whatever you exclude him from has to some some things have to remain in it still so for example if you say alayya alfan alayya alf upon me is 1000 illa alfan except a thousand is that correct you left nothing behind that is the that they say la yasihu and it is batil upon me is a thousand except a thousand what is that? So here they say that al mustathna minhu has to remain something. فَلَا يَكُونُ مُسْتَغْرِقًا جَمِيعَ الْأَفْرَادِ The second condition that he placed is what? أَنْ يَكُونَ مُتَّصِلًا بِالْكَلَامِ It has to be connected to the speech. فَلَا يَتَأَخَّرُ النُّطْقُ بالاستثناء عن النطق بالمستثنى منه حقيقة أو حكما. The second one is that it has to be connected to the speech in which you are saying. So you can't say today upon me is a thousand and tomorrow you call and you say except five hundred. That is that exception allowed? No. تأخر it delayed. Except the أحناف. The أحناف they believe you can. According to the Hanifis, they believe there is. أما جمهور they believe لا. أن يكون متصلا بالكلام فلا يتأخر النطق بالاستثناء عن النطق بالاستثناء منه حقيقة أو حكما. Some of the scholars they use the Hadith of Ibn Abbas when the Prophet صلى الله spoke and he said no one is allowed to cut from the trees of Mecca and to take. And then Ibn Ibn Abbas, the father of Abdullah Ibn Abbas said يا رسول الله إلا الإذخر. What about the إذخر? Because the people they make from it. Their boats and their sufun and their so the messengers and they burn it to use it. It's beneficial for them. Then the prophet said, "Illa al-idhkar." Okay, except the idhkar. The exception that the prophet prayed, pray, played here, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, was not part of his speech. It was actually brought by who? Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib. So some scholars use that as an argument, but we're not in maudin at tarjih. So the author, Rahimahullah, the second condition which he placed is at an yakuna mutasina bil kalam. It has to be connected to the it has to be connected to the speech. And it can't be delayed from it. And we're going to stop there, inshaAllah ta'ala. Anything which we have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and Shaytan. And Allah and His Messenger are free from it. 
سبحانك اللهم بحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أستغفرك وأتوب إليه